here we go again, guys. We're going to be um, doing Sand Harbor Golf Club this time. Sorry, I got to take care of a little bit of housekeeping right here while I'm doing this. Uh, da -da 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 Oh, what was I looking at there? Um, so yeah, Sand Harbor Golf Club by MG West. Um, I always do this before I start these off. Um, I'm going to be playing with player clubs, not tour clubs on these because these are geared towards CC. So I just feel it appropriate to play with the, um, with the middle of the range clubs. Um, in that spirit, it doesn't matter what I shoot on these courses. It in no way impacts the judging, nor does it impact uh, whether I deem a course to be CC suitable or not. What I shoot is what I shoot. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Usually swings more to the bad side, so just is what it is. Um, as we go through these courses, I will make comments. If there are technical flaws, then I'm going to point them out as technical issues. Um, the judges are going to say the exact same things on them in their notes, so don't be too upset about that it just is what it is beyond that most of the comments i make are my opinions only um it doesn't have anything to do with the judging at this point um, just for the simple fact these are my first impressions of the course i haven't played any of these before i stream them so you're getting my very first looks at it and my comments are typically just the way i see it as a fellow designer um, things that in my eyes may either make the playability better or the looks better or whatever so um, I try not to be offensive in what I say. Hopefully you guys don't find it offensive. Um, if you do, just take it for what it's worth. I'm not being negative on your course. Please don't come back into the course threads and raise hell and try to defend every little point on something or PM me a lot of dirty messages. So, Okay. I had to make sure that that took the way I thought it was going to. So let's go ahead and get started on this course, course number two of Friday, which is technically day four of the TGCT CC Summer Showdown Design Contest Streaming Critiques. I don't remember what I'm doing, just talking too much. I think he said uh, black tees. Pretty sure it was black tees. I don't know if it's pin one or not, but I'm going to go check that out really quick. Yeah, black tees, pin set one. Thank goodness. Come on, search, 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 search. Find me this course. This is Sand Harbor Golf Club by MG West. So you said there were like five people that didn't finish. There was actually, by my count, I have to go back and look at it again. I think there's only four. But I could be wrong. So it's going to be playing at 7,000 yards. Pin set one. I think this one's going up against D-Dog in the first round. I'd have to go back and look at my bracket to see for sure. But I thought that who. I think that's who he's matched up against. Hmm. Okay, here's some things I can... It's in a horrible looking tee shot right here. We've got our view behind these front bunkers showing. The um, biggest thing that stands out is the level of your tee box has killed the look off your fairway. You've got a lot of stuff down in here that's actually your playable area. You've completely taken the view of the player area away just by the tee box. So I would adjust my level here. Either lower your tee box as a whole or at least lower this front part of it stair step it down so you've got one part make this shorter and then make it shorter up here on the front but we can keep that all one level up there and still keep um, this as low as what it is you be a little bit cleaner with your edges with your brushes coming through here just make them blend in a little bit better 
That's a very tic-tac thing, but it is something that we do look at as judges. This bunker is actually done pretty well. I like the lipping you've got on the back right there. This bunker could have used the same thing. It's just too flat down here into the ground to the point where it almost looks like you used a flattened brush and just went and put it like a circle around it and hit flatten. It flattened it all out. So same thing on this one. You want the back side of this bunker to be raised a little bit to give the view. Lip it off a little bit and let that flow, let your fairway flow off the back of your mounting right there. I don't know that the grass fits that right there, but that's an individual's choice, not necessarily mine. I'm not crazy about the shape of that bunker, but that's just a my taste kind of thing. It doesn't have anything to do with what you put there. That's just my own personal preference. I would have done that a little bit different, but don't be afraid to exaggerate your mounting a little bit all the way throughout. So you started a good lip right here, but then it flattened out and came back over to a decent lip over here. This is the right size of a lip going down into your fairway, so that's actually well done, but keep your center right here. Don't, um, don't bury your center. Damn, well, those are firm. Ooh, shit. I didn't think those were firm, or I wouldn't have hit that shot that way. <laughs> that almost got me. So, yeah, I mean, think about your view right here. Without the grass and everything else, It's uh, the grass is unnecessary. Just a little bit of elevation to where you'd see the top of your bunkers behind it, off the back side of your bunker right there, would have been pretty cool. So a little bit of a missed opportunity right there. I'm going to point out the green only because um, I don't mind the shape. I mean, I've played courses that have shapes like this, so that's not a problem to me. But because the way you chose to sculpt this so um, severe right here, and this is almost um, almost too much um, slope coming off that bank right there. You've created the valley. Feasibly, as a, uh, as a scheduler, this really only gives me three pin positions. I've got the one you've got right there. You've got one over here in the back left. You've got one in the back right. I don't know where you put another pin position that's going to play different than other pins. You can put another one back here on the back left. Don't even think about using anywhere else down the center. This is your one middle of the green um, pin right here. Anything else you have pinned you know, behind this pin is dead. It's not legal and won't be used. So you're kind of forced using two over here to the right. So had you not done that, gone with a softer slope, you know, you could have shelled this off a little bit, made a softer slope and a little bit more even on that back side. You could have had a back center pin position that would have played pretty cool. That would have played dramatically different from the first and your ones on your left and right. But that's, uh, that's stuff that just comes with time in the designer and practice. So, and, you know, viewing golf courses and see how they play and how they flow. I'm doing pretty well at starting every one of these off with a birdie. Have you guys notice that? 144 is the slower greens. They're actually medium speed greens at 144, but when you compare to everything being 175 and above for the most part that you're going up against, then it at least means I can, and nothing wrong with the green speed. That, that's not the point of saying that. Just saying that most of the courses have had faster green speeds, so I can be a little bit more, um, adventurous with my putts on this. Good concept here. I mean, it's open and I can deal with that. Same with your um, way with your bunkers. Stand back off your tee box and look at your bunkers and Think about how they not only function as hazards, but how do they frame your hole. It's the same thing. These could have lived with being elevated a little bit, definitely elevated more behind each one of them. And where they are, I mean, what you have isn't horrible, but it would just be a little bit more dramatic tee shot with those in there. I don't mind the waste bunker. Just be smoother with your shapes. This is um, a little bit herky-jerky around the edges of your bunker right here. So you can make that a lot smoother where it's a lot more appealing to the eye. It's not gonna change your um, playability at all, but um, 
it comes a little bit uh, comes in a little bit scraggly around the edges. Looking at it from that standpoint, I mean, you've done a pretty solid job in the sculpting on the inside with the bunker pan. I mean, it works. I don't mind the slope and everything else on it. Usually, you want to have a flat pan on your bunkers, but with this being a big waste bunker, it doesn't mind. The planting doesn't do doesn't do you any favors here. No reason to have that grass on top of that hill because it's already going to be a little bit blocked off. I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a second. So having that mounded behind there is fine. But you don't need the grass because you've effectively blocked everything off. We see nothing behind there, you know, so we have no view besides the grass. You would have been okay with, uh, you know, if you want to keep your bushes and your grass work over here to the edge of it. I mean, that's fine. You can use that as an accent piece, but you don't want to do this a lot in your playable view lines. Because you've actually got a pretty decent um, complex going on here. It's very simplistic with the circle bunkers and everything but it at least work but we don't know if it works or not because we can't see it so you either need to raise that up a lot behind there to keep your planning or just get rid of the planning most designers are going to tell you that the planning there's unnecessary it doesn't do you do you any good definitely doesn't do you any favors in regards to the course damn i'm gonna slow on my back swing again that's gonna hurt me Down that hill, get down that hill. That's why I played that that short. I saw the hill, but nah, that didn't do what I wanted it to. So I'll birdie the opening par four. I'll par the par five. Yay, yay for Griff. Yep, very wide open. Oh, I'm going to get a birdie there too. Hoorah. I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm seeing, I'm saying it's, uh, it's just stuff that lets us know you're a little bit newer in the designer. Um, definitely not bad ideas, um, not even necessarily bad execution, it's just finishing. And that's stuff you get when you, um, you know, when you just spend the time in the design and you put courses out and you learn from each one of them. So, 181. You've pretty much got an illegal pin right here. So for um, tour standards, we always want to be three blocks, basically four yards away from any part of the edge. I mean, I guess you are technically away from it because you got your fairway apron going around right there, but that's a pretty tight pin for that length of shot. I mean, that's 185 yards. And especially with this ridge, like right in behind it, uh, I don't know that I'd do that shelving. So this green's not as um, successful. What do you say, Reeb Dude? Not as successful. The um, With this length of shot, with it being a, a 180 yards plus, you could have done away with the shelving right there or cr trying to create a tier and just move this pin back, you know, a little bit. And that still creates a pretty tight shot because, I mean, look at the angle of your green. That's actually pretty narrow. That's 181 yards. So um, you have to think about the length of your shot and what you're doing with your green. So you don't do stuff like this unless it's like 130, 140 max, where people already have a lot more control over the shot. This is a pretty hard pin to get at. So other than that, just same thing around some of your bunker edges right here. You can just make it a little bit cleaner. 
round this little area out instead of having it being like a little tongue sticking out right there just go ahead and like make that a rounded area off right there and be a little bit cleaner around the outside so this one's um, this one's a little bit rough right here man for a shot actually coming in I don't know exactly how to play this one I'm not gonna lie I mean, I see what you're going for there with your slope, trying to help that ball right there, but the problem is you've eliminated a lot of your green for pinning. I would not feel comfortable with pins up there at the top of that ridge behind that at all as a scheduler. Not at that distance. So it's, um, it's a little bit of a function thing. You just got to think about the flow and the form of what you got going on. And like I said, those are just things that we learn as we um, design more. Um, when you play through other people's courses, um, especially uh, known designers that have had a lot of courses put on tour, look and see what they're doing and think about why they're doing it. You know, um, There's always a reason they're doing something. Try to get into their mindset as to why they're doing something. No, solid concept off the tee right here. Same thing with your bunker. I'm not going to keep repeating it, but just get in the habit of raising the back side of your bunkers up. I mean, you always want to have one high side and one low side to your bunkers. There are exceptions to that, but I'm not going to get into bunker theory necessarily for what we're doing right here. But ordinarily, you're going to want to have one high side, one low side to give your bunker depth. And actually, especially this type of bunker where you want it, you know, that contrast to your fairway to actually make it a hazard. I do like that you moved it off to the right and didn't stick it right in the middle. And just be a little bit smoother. Use the round soft fuzzy brush to flatten out coming off that and just blend um, those um, rough contours into each other and you get a nice smooth flow going to your fairway right there. Ah, shit. But that was just barely fast, so I shouldn't be off the fairway on this one. That didn't feel like a fast swing to me, and apparently it was just barely fast, so. So a little bit of a missed opportunity here. Um, the first thing is, I wouldn't have this drop off quite as steep as what you've got it. I would make this a little bit more gradual drop, and while you filled it in with grass, um, I would have came in with like some heavier bushes and everything else to kind of create a hollow in there, give it a little bit more eye candy to it just to set it off, and probably would have started it up here around this area right there. That way it actually comes into your um, line of sight when you're doing it. So some shrubbery and maybe a little rock work, something down there, just something to set it off. But the sight line we're given with that with nothing to fill it in then we just got like a, a straight down wall behind us and that's not something you're gonna see a lot in real life um, just make that a more of a slope you know a gradual hill coming off of it rather than just a straight drop off damn another fast one hell I may get to see the bottom of that Man. Pretty solid green on this one. I actually like this one. You um, want to avoid using stock shapes right next to each other like that. I mean, having a bunker using a stock shape is okay here and there, but you don't want to put three of them right next to each other. Um, it, it's just a little bit jarring to the eyeball, especially people who have been around the game or the designer for a while. So, you know, have this shape here, have something that has a different shape on this side, and then something that's a little bit different shape on this side. What do you say, Matt? 
So three stock shapes side by side um, is a little bit of a no-no. Let's see, am I running downhill right there? Uphill, I'm running downhill. So these are 144s, okay. Ah. Oh no, I like the contour of the green though. I like the way that flows. That, and that you've got a backboard over there up against the right or up against the right side, and that's fine, but it still leaves you a place to put four different pins on it. So pretty solid work on that one. How deep into theory do I want to get right here? Okay. This is going to be a little bit longer stream. I can see it coming. Um, MG West is a newer designer, so I'm going to take a little bit of time and just explain some things as we're going and to give reasoning behind what I'm doing. So we have lined our fairway with four perfectly round bunkers all the same size on the right side and three on the left side. Um, it, it's it's too symmetrical it doesn't and it, it doesn't do anything for your course um, concept wise with this you don't need this many bunkers right there anyway it, it just it becomes very patterned um, it, it's just too evenly spaced out so where you would have helped yourself if if you were to pass me this course file and I start making changes one of the first things I'm gonna do on this hole right here is I'm gonna get rid of the straight line that I have going and you've created a perfectly straight line with your angle of your fairway and the way you use your, your use your bunkers on either side and it's not that your bunkers are bad um, because you've done some pretty decent sculpting in and around them I like what you've done you know setting off the back side of them with the lip and where you fit them into your fairway but your overall effect that you're giving putting that many down just creates a very tunnel you know type approach it doesn't come off as very interesting so one of the first things I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna change the shape I am going to if I want my landing area where's my landing area on this so my landing area is basically right next to the second bunker so I am going to start my fairway probably a little bit further off from this tee box first off but I'm gonna start it here on the left hand side I'm gonna start moving my, my fairway to this side using that hill right there as a reference. I'm actually wanting the player's sight line to follow that hill off the tee box. And then I'm going to dog leg, it, dog leg it back to my landing area, which is right here. And I'm going to keep on running it towards the left this way and then cut it back to the right over here coming down to my... Um, to my elevated green and I'm not going to run my I'm not going to run it all the way up there anyway so if you're going to do that then and I'm going to tell you how <clears throat> I would do this I go anyway but what we're going to do by moving we're not affecting the playability really much at all by what I'm doing right there all I'm doing is shifting the flow of the fairway and creating different angles that number one I can use for playability if I want to depending on the tees and everything else but I'm creating a different flow for the player's eye. Um, and that way it, it's a lot more interesting to look at off the tee box and gives the, um, it gives it a little bit more depth um, and character as far as how the hole plays. And then I might use, um, instead of having a round bunker right here, since it's my player area and I have used a um, curve coming around this side, I might use a bigger waist bunker style thing in this area right there for somebody to play off to the side. And then I'm going to have an open area and maybe use another bunker down here in this area just to frame my hole. It, they can be hazards, but you're using it to frame at that standpoint. So, I mean, you want to avoid really straight lines for the most part. There's some courses it works on, um, and, but it has to be done very specifically, very intentionally, and it has to make a lot of sense. Now, on my elevated green right here, I'm going, I'm not going to make that such a stark contrast. I'm going to chop off the end of my fairway here. This serves us really no purpose. I'm going to make that a more gradual slope 
coming down and I want to use grass, shrubbery, and everything else to make it look like the side of the hillock. And then wind your stairway down, you know, into it to your playable area when they're going up. But just give us some character. Because right now it's just a very stark flat, bam, here's a green. You know, we just raised it up, flattened it out, bam, and stuck a green on top of it. So it loses, um, I mean, it just falls flat. That's, that's the best way to say it. It's not that your concepts are bad. It's think about the execution, think about the way you want the ball to play, and think about where you want the player's eyes to go when you're putting your course in. And see, at 560, playing 270 yards with player clubs especially, that's not reachable. You don't even think about it. There's no reason to make somebody play this far down into this area. Because then what have they got? Just a massive, you know, wall to look at when they're going up to the green. So, I mean, I'm not even going to play it down there with the three wood. I'm shortening it up. I'm wanting to play over here from this front angle. So, there's no reason to even make somebody use that. And then think about if that was smoother coming down off the side and you've got brushwork and some, a little bit of rock work and some grass mixed in with it. Think about how nice that looks as an elevated green compared to just a wall of rock. Be careful with making that big of a backboard. You um, probably better off. I mean, I like the idea of a backboard there. I think that's pretty cool. But uh, make it smaller. Actually raise that back end up more and then make it drop off faster and then let it run down a little bit more instead of making it just a solid wall of yellow because you're limiting, especially with an oval green, you're limiting your pin placements. I mean, you've got plenty of room here to put um, four pins on, but you can make it a little bit more interesting um, as far as where a person puts their putt. I actually probably would have left this side elevated over here to the right and then over here on the left um, probably would have started create a slope falling away from that side and giving myself a few different pins that play very different. But that's just me. So that's just giving you an idea behind some of the um, thoughts behind it. We got back to back par fives here. Yep. I think um, in a lot of ways, I think you would um, just benefit from looking at other designers that have done, um, you know, a lot of tour courses. And just study what they're doing and don't look at it from a player's perspective, you know, like you're just playing around. Look at it from a designer's eyeball and look and see where they place things and figure out why they've placed it there. I'll be right back, guys. 30 seconds. Sorry, I've got an ongoing thing I've got to keep up with here. Put my wife and figure out if I'm going to make pork chops tonight or if we're going to do a pizza night. So, 
This um, this bunker here really doesn't serve any purpose over here to the left. It's too far off the playing area, even as a par five. Not sure why it's there. I mean, we know the sh what shape it is. I mean, it's stock shape and all that, but can do a little bit to dress it up. And then using the exact same one over there on the other side just throws it off. A little bit of an odd shape. I'm going to call that the, the molar. Looks like a giant tooth. Good bunker there in the middle. I mean, it's too deep. And what happens there, how you got the depth out of that bunker is I think you kept on trying to go in and flatten it out and make it look right, and you kept on lowering it every time you flattened it. So the um, rule of thumb when I do these style of bunkers is I want this front lip to be about even with my fairway right here. Raise it up on the back. And don't be too aggressive on the sculpting on the inside. Just let it be barely flat there and let this be your sculpting, your back edge right there. Let that be the where it's moving up into the side of the hill. Let that be the high side. Otherwise, you want your bunker pan right here to be almost even with your um, fairway and everything. Don't deepen it out that much. Got a big old here, here. And that was done kind of cool right there. He definitely gave you a hill that you could run off of. And that's not the easiest thing to do. Could probably be a little bit smoother top to bottom, but I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I've played courses like that that are very round hills to, um, you know, to try to negotiate. So you get stuck at the top, you're just up at the top. But when you come down, you come down off of it. So that in and of itself is pretty cool. It's a nice design idea. Very, um, oh shit, this might not be fun. <laughs> See how much that kills my ball. See how just some things you've made a little bit too symmetrical using the same shapes on either side, especially generic shapes. Um, it just makes it too um, patterned, so to speak. You want a little bit of controlled chaos going on on your golf course. That's the best way I can explain it, controlled chaos. Oh, I did a bad thing right there. I wanted that to fly just a little bit more. I didn't let it go back just enough, so that's going to cost me a birdie. Damn it. Okay, first thing on this, let's be a little bit cleaner with our edges on our um, green right here. Your back's fine, but like when you come down through here, think about what shapes and such you're using to mix that in. So a little bit rough around the edges there. I don't mind the idea of hills here as um, part of the hazards, but let's not make them part of the fairway. I mean, somebody's got to mow that. So... I don't know about you, I ain't running a damn riding lawnmower up the top of that. I ain't running a push mower up the top of that. So, um, if you want to keep your hills there, the best thing that you can do... God, okay. Where do I even want to start on this? Number one, your apron's way too big. Way, way, 
way too big. Um, once again, I know the fairway shape you used to make that. I know the one you used to make that. But you don't need all this excess back there. It serves no purpose. Um, where you could have helped yourself is having your, uh, your actual fairway apron begin down here. Cut it back in. And then about right here, cut it and just make a small little circular shape back here. Bring it back around and tie it into the front. Get rid of this excess on the side and the back. Um, same thing. You don't need this running all the way around. On your hills right here, make that heavy rough. You know, in your green like right there, that's going to look pretty good. If that was heavy rough, tied into the middle of, um, of, a, of a fairway apron, that would actually look pretty cool. Your concept is actually pretty neat right there. The implementation, um, just a little bit ragged. And you're way too close to the edge right here on that. Once again, you got to be four yards from the edge of the green on this. So you need about, um, I would say, three full boxes away from the edge of any part of the green. When you start getting in on that, this becomes an illegal pin. So other than that, I actually like the um, general shape of the green. I like the idea behind this hole. There, there's actually a lot to work with right here that's really, really good. So I don't want um, I don't want MG West to think that I'm slamming or anything else. I mean, I just recognize the newer designer is what it is. Um, but you also have to understand that this is your four. This is your front pin position right here. You don't don't put a pin down here in this. You're going to be tempted to. Don't do it. This will not work as a pin just based on the um, contouring right there. Everything's going to be up above that point. So you're going to be using that as a false front basically for this front pin position. But And that could be a little bit smoothed out from there. But I don't want to feel like I'm slamming on it. I'm actually trying to give some important information here. Oh, come on. Get up there, ball. Dirt. These are only 144s. I can actually put that. Okay, wife wants pork chops. So. Yep, that just happened. I can't give a lot of information away on that big smooth, but there is a pretty significant change coming. You guys will know momentarily. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, this doesn't work. I mean, I don't even know how to break it down with that big hill right there. I don't mind some blind shots every now and then, but this doesn't work um, much at all. So I'm not going to get too deep in on that one. Just too big of a hill with nothing going on. So make that a gradual rise with the bunker, tree, something over here on the right. And dog leg it back and you can carry it, but it doesn't work in its current state.
Okay, sorry. I had a work text to take care of. Scheist. Um, minus 20 feet. I really don't know what to do here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fly the shit out of this, ain't I? I am going to completely fly this. Or leave it way, way short, but... I was actually hoping I could hit the lip right there and let it bounce up and run, but no such luck. We'll take our par and go on. Well, maybe we won't even get par out of it because I did that stupid. I didn't look and see the incline that that's running downhill or running back at me right there. So that was dumb on my part. I've got too many things going on between emails, text, and trying to do this. Straight line <clears throat> to the right looks really weird with the big curve that you've got going on. You got very, you got an oxymoron on um, flow going there. I it works. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying. Screw myself with the loft on that. Too much loft. Probably smooth out the edge of my banks right there like you've done in the middle part. Your middle part looks pretty decent and then you've gotten at the back and the end of your lake right there has kind of gotten away from you. tricky green for such a long shot. You need a little bit more depth on this. Your thin area there in the middle works, but you need to have a little bit more depth on this side of it and on this side of it. So, And then you got a big ridge right there. That, that doesn't work well at an approach shot of 200 and some odd yards. I mean, that's about the only way I can play it.
I like the bend in this one. Same thing, four bunkers, exact same stock shape, all next to each other. A little bit of a no-no. I'll say this, um, Wes, I mean, you've got, you've got some great concepts going on here. You really do. Um, one of the things I think could help as much as anything is, um, like myself, and um, I know Scarpacci streams pretty regular um, as well. I mean, we do quite a bit of streaming while we're doing course design. Um, don't be afraid to log on and ask questions and all that. And we do it quite a bit, so there's always a time for you to catch us. But that'll help you as much as anything, man. Thought the fast swing wing gonna hurt me, but I was wrong because I'm not gonna get off the damn green here. This is gonna suck. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I see great and wonderful things happening here. You know what? That wasn't a bad putt there, guys. That wasn't a bad putt right there. That wasn't that damn far from going in, so. This is um, Sand Harbor by um, MG West. That right there could have been a lot worse than what it was playing that. So now we're falling in the pattern that we got the same stop shapes over and over right next to each other. Same thing here on the left-hand side. You're just doing it too much. Too much. I mean, it's not that the ideas that he has going on are bad. It's just the um, implementation of what we have going on. Solid concepts just need um, some finishing. It's all in the world it is at this point. Oh, I don't know. However many I get through, man. Oh, slow down swing is going to get me on that. It's going to leave me short. That was dead on had I not paused at the top of my swing right there. So that was on me. That wasn't going for the putt. That was saving par putt right there. Whew. Still got a nice little bender. So I'm sure we'll get six or seven of them in between today and tonight. It's 2.30 my time now. I got to get off here about 4.15 to 4.30 and um, make dinner and all that. And then um, I'll be right back at it tonight. So I'll probably get three in this afternoon and three in tonight. Maybe four, depending on how much wine I have and how tired I am. You know, there, there's a really good concept going on right here. I like it, but it's the same thing. All round bunkers, all symmetrical. It's um, It just creates patterns. 
if you vary this up, if you have your one bunker there in the front that I'm aiming towards, that's good. Instead of having two round bunkers right here, why don't you make this like one bunker? Shape it out, create some curve in it and everything else. Make one bunker, pull your fairway in and around it this way, run it off behind the back of that bunker, and then keep it going. I mean, don't be afraid to use some shapes, man. It's a little bit too um, generic. I mean, that's the only way I can describe it. And I'm not meaning that derogatory, but it comes off very generic. And you've done some good things. You've got a good eye for some certain areas, but it's um, it's just experience at this point in creating that flow. Not a big fan of sticking a pin on top of the hill. You fall off on all four sides on that. That's kind of a rough thing to do. Pick a side of it. That's where you want your pin to be. But putting it in a place where it falls off on all four sides is a way to have people upset at you. Move it to the right, about three yards right there, and you're good to go. Got us a little bit of window dressing here on the right, a la Jacob Kessler. I think you guys did some collaborating on that, didn't you? Well, not a horrible looking shot here. Just same thing, bunkers. All the same. I figure if I repeat it enough, you're going to get the idea of what I'm trying to say here. That You've got some good shaping to them, and you've done right by mounting up behind most of them and all that. But this, um, just use the same bunkers. You make a few changes here and there, and this is a pretty cool looking hole. So you definitely have some good things going for you, man. You just, uh, just need some time as a designer and learning how to finish. Well, damn. Left that a lot shorter than I thought I was going to. That's going to break off. There's a lot bullshit. There's a lot more right to left in that than what it's trying to show me right there. Actually, that might kick to the right off that. I know that one line in front of me is going right to left. It looks like the one behind that's going left to right. It looks like the one behind that's going left to right. And then it looks like it starts falling. Shit, I don't know where to put this. Fuck it. We'll just do it and see what happens. Yeah, look at that. Yep. Doesn't show any beads there, but you can see that. You can see that. Now see, here's where we're going to get into a separate problem because we have kept the same two or three shapes in our bunkers all the way through the course until we get to this hole. And now then we've gone completely different in how we're shaping. So this kind of kills your continuity aspect and you're too close to the edge of your green for this pin. I'm going to let this play out a lot more to the left here. What kind of sloping have I got? Okay, I've got a general feed over here, so. Let's just par this thing and not play with it too much. Man, I thought that would go a lot further. Son of a 
bitch. I really thought I was going to be up on that back shelf right there. I know I lofted a little bit, but damn, nation. That was a perfect, perfect swing. And not wind back in my face. What the hell? That's a putt there, guys. That's a putt right there. First angle coming in, I thought he was going to give me a Baritz green there for a second, but it's not. So this is a par three. <sighs> really want to be careful about using these type of slopes on this type of distance, especially putting that pin right up against it. And the slope right behind it. Boy, that is tough right there. That is tough right there. I'm surprised that stayed up there. I am surprised that stayed up there. Ah, get in there, ball. I should have looked at that one a little bit closer. Thought I had it, but... you that balls <laughs> okay do you see the slope behind that my ball didn't turn even a little bit it just just kept right on going i didn't put that that hard good lord Cool concept on a hole. I like a tree area. I like your idea of your bunker around the back side right there. Those are pretty cool. Yeah, not a bad concept on this one. Ah, uh, slow, fast. That you could see it. My back swing. That was a hurricane jerk. My fucking PS4 right there. Think the game said, "Oh, look, there's a bunker on the left. Just make sure he gets in it." Shit, I'm scared to hit this now because I see break, but hell, based on what I just saw a second ago, I don't know that my putt's going to move. Good Lord. 
I had just as much, if not more, break than that in the last putt I had. It went straight. Yeah, you don't need the bushes and everything on top of your knolls right there in front, man. Not the one in the middle anyway. Just let it be um, heavy rough right there. It's a cool look. And that's just a personal preference kind of thing. I mean, nothing wrong with what you did right there, but... Uh, oh, man. Did you see that? Watch my backswing. Now, that was a laggy-ass backswing. Oh, wow. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, game. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, this is kind of a neat concept. It gives you a couple of different ways to play into this hole. I'm actually going to let this go a little bit long. Because I can use that backboard right there. But... Right, hit about right in there. Man, I may have lofted it too much. I actually wanted to hit right behind the hole right there and let it hit that backboard and come back down. But I like playing shots like that. That's automatically going to jump to the left right off the jump right there. So, Nope, it didn't. And it hung my putt out. So if I aimed it where I wanted to aim it, it would have gone in. But with that really quick running bead right there in front of my putter, I really thought it was going to... Really thought it was going to jump on me. But oh well. Okay. Oh, that is Sand Harbor Golf Club by MG West. And uh, for a newer designer, there's some really good things going on there. Um, a lot of that's just going to be in the finish work and um, spending time in the designer. You know, I tried to point some things out here and there. I hope it didn't seem like it was overly harsh. Um, I wasn't trying to be in any way. But the, um, you know, that's just going to be um, cleaning up some uh, edges here and there and um, changing your bunkering up a little bit where you're not using stock shapes. I mean, you're going to find that uh, most most veteran designers don't use stock shapes at all. Uh, they either freehand their own with splines or they freehand them using shapes um, and try to make them fit in ways that really um, accentuate the flow of the course. But other than that, man, there's some really good um, ideas going on there. So um, we just need to get with you and teach you how to finish them off and... Um, make them flow beginning to end so other than that guys i'm going to kill this one get it exported and uploaded to youtube and i will be back with another course and um, um in the next five or ten minutes